Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making news this morning, a man is killed in a motorcycle crash on the northwest side. We have details just ahead. President Trump and Joe Biden still in a fierce battle for the White House. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington with the latest in the presidential race just ahead. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, pretty mild at 57 degrees and we'll be seeing some 80s again. We're going to check in with Mike to see what you can expect for your weekend. But for now, happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. Good morning to you. It is November 5th and yeah, you really don't need a jacket out there this morning. No, I, I had it and I was like, yeah, yeah, throw it back in the <laughs> another day <laughs> for now. But let's see if there are any changes on the horizon. Mike Osterhage is in this morning. Hey, good morning. good morning. As time rolls on, no jackets will well, perhaps Saturday morning. Morning. I mean, okay. you might get a little bit of a, a slight cool down, but uh, as far as the there's a dampness out there, yeah. too. Yeah. So that might warrant. And I did see patchy fog this morning. Yeah, yeah we're already seeing some of that and we're going to be seeing more of it this morning. And as you saw in that one uh, right off the bat, the uh, live cam picture, it looked a little kind of fuzzy out there. This view is not bad looking off to the uh, west and northwest. Hint of fog down around uh, Pleasanton. And once again, these are the reporting sites. So in between these areas, you could see in low lying areas, a couple of little patches of fog like Mark was uh, just talking about over there around Gonzales, half mile visibility as of right now. So kind of the same uh, situation. College Station's got a lot as well. Same situation that we've seen the past couple of mornings. We'll get those pockets that are going to get real thick at times. They may um, visibility may improve and this will be the situation through about seven probably close to, to eight o'clock this morning. 57 degrees right now, so we're just about at a normal high temp or normal low temperature. Pardon me. Uh, in some cases, actually a little bit above that. Look at that. We've got 60s up there in the hill country, and yep, there is more humidity. Dew points are creeping up there, approaching 60 in the hill country, which means you walk outside, you definitely notice the humidity. Mold is on the low side this morning and temperatures. That's pretty much about it. I mean, I don't think we're going to be dropping down that much more because we've got all this humidity around here, which won't let things drop down. Patchy fog, partly cloudy skies, and then another good looking day. And once again, right around 80. Get used to that. Maybe add a degree or two uh, to that over the weekend. We'll talk about little rain chance way down the road. Details in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here is Officer Marcus Trujillo. Good morning, sir. What's going on? Well, good morning, Mike, and good morning, everyone at home. Right now, as we take a look at the roadways, highways look pretty good. So no indications that we have any slowdowns right now. Let's uh, move over to Trans Guide. Take a look at a couple different cameras there. Up on the northwest side, 410 Fredericksburg, 410 uh, I-10 area. So far, traffic move along fairly well. And here in the downtown vicinity, 35 in Ogalitos, north and south on lanes. No delays, no congestion, and no vehicles out there. 604 at Bandera. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Marcus. As we wake up this morning, still no winner in the presidential election. Millions of ballots are still being counted in those critical battleground states. Meanwhile, President Donald Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden are locked in a fierce battle for the White House. Here's what we see so far. Biden has 264 electoral votes compared to President Trump's 214. The goal is 270. ABC's Faith Ibube is following every step of this historic election and has more from Washington. This morning, the counting continues with former Vice President Joe Biden saying he sees victory ahead. I'm not here to declare that we've won, but I am here to report when the count is finished, we believe we will be the winners. Biden eating into Trump's lead in Pennsylvania, claiming he'll flip Arizona blue. Projections now show he's likely to win in Michigan and Wisconsin, and he's just 17 electoral votes shy of the presidency. His campaign setting a record for most votes for any presidential candidate. We've won with the majority of the American people. Indeed, Senator Harris and I are on track to win more votes than any ticket in the history of this country. Still, the former vice president urging patience as vote counting continues in swing states like Nevada, Georgia, and Pennsylvania. The president currently holds a lead in the Keystone State, but there are hundreds of thousands of ballots yet to be counted. The majority from Democratic-leaning areas, but without any legal basis, the president saying this. So we'll be going to the U.S. Supreme Court. We want all voting to stop. Even the Senate Majority Leader, Republican Mitch McConnell, weighing in. Claiming you win the election is different from 
finishing the counting. With the president's chances of staying in the White House for four more years narrowing, the Trump campaign now mounting court challenges in several states, including Michigan, where he's pushing for more GOP observers to be allowed into counting locations. This group causing chaos inside one of those sites, chanting, stop the count. Other than his overnight news conference yesterday, the president hasn't been seen. He's been behind closed doors in the White House. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. Meanwhile, there was unrest overnight in Portland, Oregon. People had gathered for a unity march on Election Day. Organizers say it was peaceful, but uh, uh, to be a peaceful gathering, local law enforcement had to stop a potential arson after individuals smashed windows and poured flammable liquid inside a business. Meanwhile, in Colorado, aerial video showing an anti-President Trump protest in Denver showing a crowd burning a President Donald Trump flag last night. According to local news reports there, there were dueling protests. The other one was anti-government. Back here at home, a crash turned deadly last night on the access road of Blue 410 near Evers. This is on the northwest side. San Antonio police say a man riding a motorcycle rear-ended a car at the scene. No word on the man's identity. Officers describe him as a man in his 30s. No other injuries were reported. Here in Bear County, a slight dip in our seven-day average, but officials say it remains above the 200 mark. Five new deaths and 185 new COVID cases were announced in the latest report. 255 COVID-19 patients are in the hospital, 110 are now in the intensive care unit, and 56 are on ventilators. Right now, it is 436, 57 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, a first look at the legal battles that could decide this election. And up next, an update on Ada as it drenches Central America, gets ready to head possibly towards the United States. And taking a look out with live cam. Yeah, it's a pretty mild 57 degrees. I decided to leave the jacket in the car today. Uh, but we're going to check in with Mike to see what we can expect for the rest of your Thursday and this weekend. We'll be right back. Today marks the third anniversary of the state's worst mass shooting. On November 5th, 2017, 26 people were killed during Sunday morning worship at First Baptist Church down in Sutherland Springs. Three years later, November 5th will always be a horrible reminder of that tragedy that took lives away from those loved ones. Many are still trying to heal both physically and mentally. While the community has been forced to change in many ways, people say strong faith in God is a vital part that keeps them going. Members of the church have been determined to move forward and show that evil did not win. Ada has been degraded, downgraded to a tropical depression, but it still brought heavy rains to Central America. The storm made landfall in Nicaragua Tuesday as a Category 4 hurricane, and even though it has lowered in intensity, it can still cause significant damage through floods and landslides. So far, Ada has destroyed some homes and knocked over trees and power lines. The storm is expected to re-energize as it goes back out over the Caribbean. It could make it to Cuba and then Florida in the next few days. Stocks are rallying on Wall Street as investors embrace the upside of more gridlock in Washington. The Nasdaq, S&P 500, had their best day in months. Dow picked up 367 points and the Nasdaq gained more than 400. With the Republicans edging closer to retaining control of the U.S. Senate, prospects dim for tax increases and tighter regulations on businesses that investors expected if Democrats had scored an electoral sweep. Big stimulus spending is also less likely. And time now is 441 and 57 degrees for now. Well, still ahead as we approach flu season, we break down the best time and place to get a flu shot safely. Also next, a closer look at the legal battles that are ahead for the 2020 election. And we turn now to the legal battles that could decide this election. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi with the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, the legal fight just beginning in the battlegrounds. Stop the Trump! Stop the Trump! The Trump campaign filing a stack of lawsuits amid a tense race for the White House, with mail-in ballots taking center stage. In Michigan, the president's team filing suit to stop ballot counting. In Wisconsin, the Trump team demanding a recount, writing in a statement that there are, quote, serious doubts about the validity of the results. And in Georgia, the campaign is seeking to order Chatham County to store and account for all ballots received after the polls closed. The legal strategy seems to boil down to this, stopping the count in place 
places where Donald Trump is ahead, Pennsylvania, continuing to count or counting again in places where he is behind. And coming up at 7 a.m., the latest on the legal battle in Pennsylvania. With your GMA First Look, I'm Monica Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. As the number of COVID-19 cases grows, so does the need to reduce the spread of influenza. Health experts say that means getting a flu shot. 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris says there are options to get one safely. As seasons change, the coronavirus isn't the only health worry. There's also the flu. I feel so nervous because we, we have two viruses at the same time during fall and winter. Because there's not yet an approved vaccine against COVID-19, doctors are recommending with more urgency than ever that people get their flu shot now. So the flu shot won't reduce your risk of getting COVID-19, but it will cut your risk of getting the flu. And even if you do get the flu, if you've had the flu shot, you're also less likely to get severely sick or need to be hospitalized. <coughs> If you get sick, diagnostic testing can help determine if it's flu or COVID. Even if your flu test is positive, it is still possible to have COVID-19 at the same time. The flu shot takes about two weeks to become fully effective. Same for kids. Doctors recommend children six months and older get their flu shot soon. As for where, you have options. Your local pharmacy can have you in and out for the flu shot in really just a few minutes. And then doctor's offices and clinics are doing various things to make sure flu shots are safe too. So that might be drive up clinics or special hours that are just for flu shots. The main thing is to call ahead to find out what's going on. When I went to get my flu shot, I felt very safe. I made an appointment and the place was following all the safety protocols. If you have symptoms of respiratory virus, contact your doctor. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. A reminder, our KSAT community partner, University Health, is helping with a series of flu shot drives this month. Your first chance is coming up this Saturday from 8 a.m. to noon at the Dub Ferris Athletic Complex in the 8400 block of North Loop 1604 West. This is one of several flu shot drives. Most major insurance plans will be accepted and people without insurance can still get a flu shot for free. You do need to have an appointment, though, to receive a flu shot. Right now it is 447. It's very early, but there are some cars on the roads right now. How's it looking? Officer Marcus Trujillo. Not too bad right now. This is uh, 37 at I-10, it's just southeast of downtown. And uh, traveling up 37, right there through 37 in Jones Avenue, you see pretty much have the road to yourself. So not a bad time. It is still very early in the morning. 37 at Carolina, no issues. Then take a look. 410 at Callahan and uh, 35 at 90, both looking great right now. So no delays in anyone's travel times. Just Make sure you watch that uh, speed limit once you hit out. Make sure you buckle up. Yes, sir. We like the fall time change, but is anybody else really struggling with it this year, especially in the evening? It, it is. Ugh. It is strange when it, you know, because it gets dark earlier. So much earlier. But, yeah. How are you sleeping, Mike? But it's nice. Fine. I, I mean, you know, <laughs> Mike's like it's great. <laughs> I, I'm personally loving this. So, uh, but it, it is funny as the sun starts to sink a little bit lower. Okay. Oh, yeah. Look at Oh, it's that early. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. It works for us and our schedule. Right. Yeah. It's it's perfect if you you know have vampire hours like we do. So, uh, speaking of vampire, I just I appeared out of nowhere. Just <laughs> do what? I think vampires have better hours than we do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, beautiful uh, sunrise shot yesterday, and this is uh, we're going to be uh, seeing another beautiful one again today. If you don't have any fog around, because that once again is a threat. Obviously, nothing is showing up in this picture looking off there to the uh, east. And well, just what 10 minutes ago, there was a hint of fog showing up down there around Pleasanton, and there was some out in portions of the hill country. Now, Gonzales is down to a quarter mile visibility, so it's starting to kind of creep in here a little bit more. And again, we will see more developing as the morning rolls on 57 degrees and then 60s in parts of the hill country as of right now. So temperatures are way, way above where they have been earlier on this week and as well as over the weekend. And also the dew point temperatures measure moisture. We're starting to get close to 60. That's always that that line when you definitely feel the humidity and you walk outside you can obviously kind of smell it a little bit and dew points have gone up considerably I mean look at that just in the past 24 hours have gone up 17 and 24 degrees respectively in Kerrville as well as in Fredericksburg so all this moisture coming back on in here and that will continue to be the case now we'll see a little bit of a little bit of a drop by Saturday and so we'll have a slightly lower 
low temperature Saturday, not bone chilling cold like we've been seeing, but it'll be slightly lower. But then look at how the humidity comes back up going into the first part of next week. But then hopefully that then gets squeezed out in the form of a couple of showers with a front moving through here later in the day on Tuesday. Don't get really excited about it, nor don't get really excited about it when I use the word front because Seattle yeah, shave temperatures slightly, but it's not going to be anything like what we've seen uh, in the past couple of weeks. Once again, around the country, there's just not anything going on around there. Quick check of the tropics, and as far as uh, Ada is concerned, it is a tropical low right now because it's been over land, but it's going to regain tropical storm strength out in the Caribbean. Make that big almost dog leg turn off to the northeast. Go across Cuba and then make a turn right in toward Miami and it still looks like it's going to be sort of lingering out here in the Gulf of Mexico. But that front I was talking about that's going to be kind of sliding through here that will take it and then shoot it off to the northeast. So this will not have any effect on us. Maybe down there around South Florida once we get in toward the first part of next week. But for us uh, not much is really changing except the low temperatures. They'll be kind of creeping upward over the next couple of days. We're going to make it up to 75 degrees at noon, mostly sunny skies. Once again, 80 degrees for a high temperature, which is a little bit above normal, a little more humidity. That'll be the case over the next couple of days. Of course, we get that slight drop Friday night into Saturday, but then right back in there, low temperatures, mid 60s. Highs will still stay somewhat in check, although I mean, we're looking five, almost 10 degrees above normal and perhaps a front with a front latet on Tuesday. That's French for later. Later? Um, yeah. Yes. Nice. Wow. Yeah. I, You're, I had no idea you were bilingual. I just you didn't either. Just at the spur of the moment when I see my uh, my <laughs> typo right there. So. Front latte. <laughs> latte sounds great. It comes to latet, so it's a little bit of rain and... <laughs> Okay, I'm going to go change my... Mike is working on the correction. <laughs> Thank you, He Mike. has surrendered to the fact it is not correct. <laughs> 452, <laughs> 57 <laughs> degrees. And while we don't know the official outcome of the 2020 election, we do know that Kanye West will not be the next president of the United States. But we're going to tell you how he did, though, just ahead. Wait, what? Really? <laughs> um, pick three numbers, 969, Fireball 0, Daily 4, 3936, Fireball 9. Catch 5, 12, 14, 18, 33, 35. Lotto, Texas, 8, 25, 26, 39, 52, 54. And your Powerball number is 22, 32, 33, 45, 49, Powerball 14, Power Play 2. Good luck. Get ready for another episode of The Bachelorette tonight on ABC. Plus, Kanye West is not your next president. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. One thing we do know about the race for the White House in 2020, Kanye West will not be the next president of the United States. Not that he had a chance, he was only on the ballot in a dozen states and grabbed about 60,000 votes in total. His best state, Tennessee, where around 10,000 people voted for him. But that's only about 0.3% of the vote. West conceded with a post on Twitter saying Kanye 2024 and a picture of him smiling. I will never apologize for love. I'll apologize if I wasted your time. Tonight on ABC, it's the Bachelorette episode we've all been waiting for. It appears we'll see Claire Crawley leave the show after only a couple of weeks and lots of drama and tears with Tasha Adams then starting her own search for love. That's tonight on a special night on ABC. Grohl will add to his record of most musical appearances on Saturday Night Live. His band Foo Fighters will play the show this weekend, their eighth appearance, but it'll be Grohl's 14th. Dave Chappelle will host as he did after the election in 2016. And happy birthday to Oscar-winning actress Tilda Swinton. She's 60 today, while another Oscar winner, Sam Rockwell, is 52. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Don't know if you saw the post, but last month, Dave Chappelle was seen. Uh, someone got a pic of him walking around the Pearl here in San Antonio. Oh, really? It's like, hey, did anybody hear Dave Chappelle was in town? So oh. he just kind of snuck in and snuck out. Uh, I think that's his style. Yeah. Yeah, so we wouldn't know. It's definitely his, his style. <laughs> right now, it's 457, 56 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, the latest on the presidential election as former Vice President Joe Biden uh, win some battleground states, but it's reducing President Donald Trump's chance of re-election. Plus, we check out the top searched items on Google during election night itself. That's coming up in your Morning Tech Bites. Live from Case at 12, 
Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. The battle for the presidency continues as some folks take to the streets to protest the election process so far. Plus, the latest on the case of a man accused of murder and tampering with evidence in the death of his wife. Outside with live cam, no jacket required as we kick off your Thursday morning. Mike's forecast is coming up. Hi, good morning. It is Thursday, November 5th. Pretty mild start to the day out there, and we are on the lookout for some potential fog. Let's get updated right now with meteorologist Mike Osterhage. Yeah, we've got a little bit, uh, nothing in the metropolitan area at last check, but uh, off to these where it usually kind of forms up first. We've got some fog out there, and temperatures are, yeah, as he was uh, quoting Phil Collins, no jacket required over there. <laughs> I thought about that one too this morning and look at the bottom number dew point temperature is now up to 54. 60 is always that threshold, but you step outside, uh, you know, threshold where you really feel it, but you can kind of smell the humidity a little bit out there and it is sort of a dampish cool. So maybe a light jacket. Mm, not a bad idea for some folks. 80 today for high temperature, just like yesterday, a few degrees above normal. The aquifer did go up four tenths of a foot in yesterday's reading and the allergens, just a low amount of mold out there right now. With some of the extra humidity, I would mm, kind of speculate that we might see a little extra mold kind of popping up, especially as we head in toward the weekend. So a hint of fog is now being uh, reported, kind of showing up there around Port SA. Visibility is at nine miles now. Everywhere else is pretty good in the metropolitan area, but then you go over toward Gonzales, got a quarter mile visibility, a lot more from LaGrange, Victoria, and then of course up there around College Station, it has thickened up. So as has been the case the past couple of days, we will start to see more of these patches of fog. It will start to kind of spread a little bit more in the next few hours. So patchy fog, not overly cool this morning. I mean, cool ish and then mostly sunny kind of on the humid side. You just sort of notice it a little bit more today and then going into the weekend. Yes, it will be nice. I mean, we'll have temperatures around low 80s, uh, not too awfully hot, but not overly fallish either. Will we see any fall weather details coming up in just a couple of minutes? Time saver traffic right now and officer Marcus Trujillo. Anything big going on, sir? Well, right now, Mike, things are still quiet out there on the roadways. Everything in the green? which means uh, your travel time will be uh, the normal tra travel time unless you uh, have a lead foot. In that case, uh, we'll kind of watch that speed limit out there. 37 at Jones Avenue, no issues right now. We're moving on to 37 at Carolina, so you can see north and southbound lanes still moving smoothly. More than enough room out there with no problems there. 37 at South Cross. Marcus 70. Thanks, Marcus. Right now, America on edge, waiting to find out who our next president will be. Ballots still being counted in key battleground states. And the White House is still up for grabs. Taking a look at electoral votes so far, the Associated Press reporting that uh, former Vice President Joe Biden has 264 and President Donald Trump has 214. CNN's Camila Bernal is keeping an eye on the rest of the states still counting. Protests erupting across America. People on both sides of the political aisle spilling into the streets in key battleground states like North Carolina, Nevada, Arizona, Pennsylvania, and Minnesota, where a crowd of protesters shut down a major interstate. The message of many, count every vote. Count the votes! Count the votes! The Trump campaign announcing its own protest, filing lawsuits over vote counts in Michigan, Georgia and Pennsylvania. It's a shame that we have to do that. It's the last thing that we wanted to do. It's the last thing my father wanted to do. Pennsylvania's governor condemning the lawsuits. These attempts to subvert, subvert the democratic process are simply disgraceful. Authorities in Michigan also responding, saying in a statement, Michigan's elections have been conducted transparently, with access provided for both political parties and the public. Now as votes are counted and the race tightens, Joe Biden is gaining confidence that he will take the White House. I'm not here to declare that we've won, but I am here to report when the count is finished, we believe we will be the winners. In Wilmington, Delaware, I'm Camila Bernal reporting. Well, here's how the balance of power looks right now in the United States Senate. The goal is to get to 51 right now. According to the Associated Press, Republicans have 48, Democrats have 46.
And here's a look at the U.S. House of Representatives. Democrats still in control right now with 204 seats compared with Republicans at 190 seats. Well, a day after being elected as Bear County Commissioner for Precinct 3, Trish DeBerry is already hitting the ground running for small businesses after she officially takes her seat. Having over 20 years experience as a small business owner herself, DeBerry says she knows what it's like to experience economic downturns. She says she understands the struggles small businesses are having amid the pandemic. She says she wants to start a diverse task force made up of people in the industry who can bring more input to the table. It is about accessibility to small business, having those conversations and coming up with solutions and ideas that maybe they haven't thought about it because, like I said, they've been so busy hanging on by their fingernails to try to keep their doors open. DeBerry also said she would like to explore uh, what other financial resources are available so they can accommodate San Antonio's small businesses longer. The latest now on the case of Andre McDonald, accused of murder and tampering with evidence in the death of his wife, Andreen. I believe this is the wrong video, but he was last in court back in February for a pretrial appearance, but the pandemic has still left the court case on hold. So defense attorney John Comberit says he is still awaiting a decision on his request to see evidence and he, his questions at the admissibility of several search warrants. McDonald was arrested last July, two days after the remains of his wife, Andreen, were found on a ranch about six miles from the couple's home. Right now, it's still a waiting game to find out when this case will go to trial. Now to a silver alert. San Antonio police are searching for Lywood Lawrence, who is diagnosed with a cognitive impairment. He's 83, about 5'3", weighs 125 pounds with brown hair and blue eyes. He was last seen in a light blue button-up long sleeve shirt, blue jeans and black boots. He has a top, uh, has top and bottom dentures, scar on a nose, uh, his nose, and a scar on his forehead. The senior citizen last seen around 10 o'clock last night, 7,000 block of Meadow Green, driving a 2016 Hyundai Elantra, and we have the license plate. It is NJG6290. If you have any information regarding this missing senior, contact SAPD 210-207-7660. In time now is 507 and 56 degrees. Still ahead, more details on a new study that shows how less screen time affects mental health in teens. And also next, why Starbucks is deciding to close 100 more stores in the U.S. next year. And outside with live cam, 56 degrees. We've been about 10 degrees at least cooler than that in the last week or so. What lies ahead for your Thursday and the upcoming weekend? Mike has the answers coming up. And welcome back. It's 510. In your morning consumer headlines, Starbucks is closing an additional 100 stores in the U.S. within the next year because of shifting consumer habits due to COVID-19. With fewer people working in urban centers, the coffee giant is responding by setting up more stores in the suburbs. There's also less customer traffic during the week now, but that is offset by more coffee being sold on weekends. Starbucks has become more focused on drive throughs and carry out with fewer customers lingering inside because of social distancing. The store closings are in addition to 400 previously announced for the U.S. and another 200 for Canada. Still, with Starbucks planning 850 new stores at the same time, there will actually be a net gain of 50 new stores next year. Volkswagen unveiling its most powerful version of the VW Golf ever for 2022. The new version is called the Golf R and packs a punch with 315 horsepower and all-wheel drive. Keep drivers from getting into too much trouble. It should be noted, Golf R's top speed is electronically capped at 155 miles an hour. The Golf R comes with another unique capability called Drift Mode to allow drivers to easily uh, do smoking, tire-burning donuts. That feature is not intended to be used on public roads, of course. The new offering from VW stands out in an age when many consumers want electric or cars or SUVs. Speaking of donuts, no, this is a different donuts. <laughs> one, one of America's <laughs> favorite treats gets its own day. Today, you can celebrate National Donut Day. So check your closest donut or coffee shop to see what deals they may have. So according to some reports, America eats 10 billion donuts a year. That's about 31 donuts per person. Ew, <laughs> that's too many. Krispy Kreme is offering a rare chocolate glazed version of its classic donut. 31's too many per person? 
Oh, okay. I was thinking like over a, like a year. A year. Okay, yeah. I thought about a day. Not in one sitting. <laughs> no, I no. thought I thought a day for some reason. I was like, that's disgusting. <laughs> Not thirty-one in one day. I don't know. It'd, it'd be tempting. It'd be tempting <laughs> in a year. Uh, why? How come I feel like we have deja vu donuts? It seems like National Donut Day is like six times a year now. Is that I, a problem? I think. No, <laughs> it's not. I think because there's different versions, probably chocolate or um, dozen day or, you know. That's yeah. very possible. 513, 56 degrees. And still ahead, why Apple is reportedly dealing with a shortage of parts for iPhones. And we checked out some of the most searched terms during election night. You might be surprised and you might not be. <laughs>
That's pretty much going to be the same call again today. A little bit warmer, obviously, down there along the Rio Grande Valley, but uh, pretty much 80 degrees on average, and that's where we will be tomorrow. Maybe up a couple of notches over the weekend, but high temperatures aren't going to be outrageously hot. Now, granted, we'll still be six, seven, eight degrees above normal over the weekend, but it's the low temperatures that are really going to be staying on the mild side as we get more humidity around here. Okay, upstairs in the atmosphere, here's some of that uh, moisture aloft that helped produce that little bit of kind of a rainbow in that uh, KSAC Connect picture. And then we got some really dry air coming on in here. So we will still see some beautiful uh, blue skies, maybe a hint of a milky shade to the sky. And once again, around the country, I mean, there's just nothing going on. Some clouds off to the east of us, and that's pretty much about it. And there's not even any freezing temperatures. Now, these are the reporting stations. They're probably freezing around Bismarck, but uh, things have definitely gotten a lot milder around the country, and there's no indications of any just huge blasts of cold air kind of coming on in here. We will have a bit of a front moving through. Looks like uh, later in the day on Tuesday of next week, Hopefully it squeezes out a shower or two and that'll just trim temperatures somewhat, but it's not going to be any big, you know, outbreak, any big, you know, get out the heavy coat type weather. 75 degrees today at noon, mostly sunny skies, high temperature right up to 80, a lot of sunshine, just a hint more humidity. You're going to be able to, it's not going to be oppressively humid, but you'll just notice it kind of like you do this morning. And then over the next uh, couple of days, temperatures will get up into the low 80s, low temperatures, 65. So about 20 degrees warmer for low temperatures than what we just saw a couple of days ago. Mm -hmm. Hopefully a few showers on Tuesday. Don't forget Wednesday, of course, is Veterans, Veterans Day. Veterans Day, got it. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. Just in time for a nice 77. Yep. 521, 56 degrees. And coming up next in your morning spotlight, a look at how the gaming business is booming while the pandemic has devastated the movie business. Pick three numbers, 969, Fireball 0, Daily 4, 3936, Fireball 9. Cash 5, 12, 14, 18, 33, 35, and Lotto, Texas, 8, 25, 26, 39, 52, 54. And Powerball numbers 23, 32, 33, 45, 49, Powerball 14, Power Play 2. Good luck. 525, today's Hollywood Minute includes a look at the business side of entertainment. CNN's David Daniel has the details. While the pandemic has devastated the movie business and other entertainment fields, video games are booming. The gaming analysis firm New Zoo estimates worldwide video game revenue will jump 20% this year to nearly $175 billion. Popular titles such as Animal Crossing New Horizons and Super Mario 3D All-Stars have led the way as people sheltering at home and living in quarantine have increased their spending on mobile, PC, and console games. My boy doesn't have to answer to you. And we don't have to answer to you. Diane Lane plays a woman determined to rescue her grandson from a dangerous situation in Let Him Go, opening Friday. The tense drama takes place in the 1950s, but Lane says she felt a connection between the material and life during the pandemic. You know, it's not always about who can be the toughest. I think it's often about who can feel the most, especially in these isolating times that we're in. I mean... I feel that there's this theme of missed opportunities for tenderness, you know? You're with me on this, right? We're right behind you. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Oh, and it's like, oh, by the way, Kevin Costner's in it, too. <laughs> <laughs> Aw, poor Kevin. <laughs> He'll be all right. 526, 56 degrees. And still ahead in our next half hour as the holiday season nears, coronavirus cases in the U.S. keep climbing. And an airy family demanding answers after they say a video shows shirts police arresting an 18-year-old man as he cries for help on his own doorstep. Plus, some of the best ways to make sure your lawn stays healthy during the winter months. Hi, good morning. It is Thursday, November 5th. Glad you're with us to start out your Thursday. Weather this time of year can be a little unpredictable. Let's see how the rest of our day is shaping up with meteorologist Mike Osterhage. What's the word, Mike? Well, the word is mild. It is nowhere near as chilly as what it has been for almost, almost the past couple of uh, weeks around here. You know, we've been down in the 40s. Uh, ever since late last month and now we are hovering in the uh, mid 50s here in town and there's a whole lot more humidity. Not that you, you know, we always talk about 60, the, the number where you start to sweat basically from the humidity, but you walk outside, it's like, 
Yeah, it's more humid out there, and that's what's holding these uh, temperatures up. And as far as visibility, a lot of fog down around Pleasanton right now. That really started to thicken up, and then you go off to the east, and we've got a lot more Gonzales now down to zero visibility, three miles at LaGrange, and a little bit showing up around Carrizo Springs. So we're going to have to watch out as... We roll on in for the next uh, couple of hours at least that in some places the fog is definitely going to get thicker and still be hanging around. Molds on the low side from uh, yesterday's reading and we'll make it up to 75 degrees today at noon and yeah, get used to that 80 high temperature That's where we were the past couple of days today, tomorrow, and then add a few notches to that over the weekend. Not extreme high temperatures. I'm still on the above normal side, but it's the low temperatures that will definitely be uh, going up, especially going into the weekend. Maybe a couple of showers getting squeezed out next week. We'll talk about that coming up. Time saver traffic right now and Officer Marcus Trujillo had not been much going on so far this morning. Not too much, Mike. It's been fairly quiet as far as accidents are concerned. The great news is that no delays in anyone's travel times. Traffic is flowing at uh, least at the speed limit. Just uh, watch that uh, foot once you head out there. Make sure you buckle up. Also, stay safe. 35 in Ogalitos, no issues there. And 604 at Bandera, still looking pretty good. Very light traffic on the outer loop with no problems here. 21 at Nakoma. Stephanie? Thank you, Marcus. San Antonio police say they know who they're looking for. It's just a matter of tracking him down. They're trying to find a man who they say went on the attack, possibly with a machete. Our Katrina Weber is live where it happened on Jackson Keller, not far from Loop 410. Now, Katrina, we understand this may have had to do something with jealousy. The police told us that the suspect attacked the new man in his girlfriend, his ex-girlfriend's life, uh, attacked him by cutting him on his arms. The ex-girlfriend lives here at the Jackson Apartments, and police say that this attack came by surprise. They got the call after 3.30 this morning. They found the victim here bleeding from those cuts on his arms. They say that the suspect had already taken off in a white Honda. His ex-girlfriend told officers that the suspect took them by surprise. Police say that man had been hanging out at the apartment complex, and when he saw his ex walking with another man, he went on the attack either with a large knife or machete. The man who was cut was stable when he was taken to a hospital, so it doesn't sound like this is anything life-threatening. Police say they do have a couple of addresses that they were going to check out for the, vic for the suspect where he might be, but the last word we had is that they had not made any arrests just yet. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. In case you're still wondering, still no formal winner in the presidential election. Millions of ballots are still being counted in the critical battleground states of Nevada, Arizona, Michigan, and North Carolina. The goal, of course, is 270. So far, the Associated Press reporting former Vice President Joe Biden has 264 electoral votes. President Donald Trump has 214. Despite President Donald Trump's repeated claim that the coronavirus would one day disappear, it hasn't yet. Make no mistake, this pandemic isn't over, not by a long shot. And it's not enough for us to just know more. We have to act differently. A report from the White House Coronavirus Task Force is warning states that there is a continued increase in cases, hospitalizations, and fatalities nationally, spreading southward from the coldest climates as the population moves indoors and cases increase exponentially. This is an absolute killer. And we have got to stay on our toes. We've got to wear a mask. I mean, how big a deal is this when it really, really gets right down to it? North Dakota has the highest number of cases per capita in the U.S., but most states are seeing an increase in cases, including Kansas. Wichita's two major hospitals, Ascension Via Christi and Wesley Medical Center, have zero ICU beds available. And Illinois. Compared to just last week, every single one of our 11 regions has seen an increase in the average number of people going into the hospital every day with COVID-19. But some health experts say it's too late to develop a national testing strategy. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Venezuela's president commenting on the ongoing electoral process here in the U.S. He says he rejects the ideas of interfering in internal affairs and expects the same in return. Nicolas Maduro's administration has tense relations with the U.S., which has economically blockaded the country and has sanctioned many government officials. Meanwhile, Venezuelan opposition leader Juan Guaido is recognized by more than 50 nations as the country's interim president because Maduro's 2018 re-election was considered illegitimate. The opposition has struggled to regain momentum. 
Maduro remains firmly in control of Venezuela's military and near all, nearly all other government functions. Crime Stoppers is now offering a reward in an aggravated robbery. Police are looking for the armed suspect who pointed a gun at a clerk and took off with some money. It happened last month at a Chevron Star Food Mart on Fair Avenue. That's on the southeast side. If you have any information in this case, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number on your screen, 210-224-STOP. You could be eligible for a reward of up to $5,000. 535, 56 degrees. And still ahead, we look at some of the top ways you can make sure your lawn stays healthy this winter. And more details on video release of Schertz police arresting an 18-year-old. This led to an internal investigation. And taking a look outside with live cam, a little mild, 56 degrees. I guess if you want a light sweater, if you're going to be out for a while, it's a good idea. But things are going to warm up pretty nice still. We're going to check in with Mike in just a bit. An area family wants answers after they say a video shows Shirts police arresting an 18-year-old man as he cries for help on his own doorstep. We want to warn you, some may find the upcoming video disturbing. The video has led to an internal investigation, but police say the man was being uncooperative. Stephen Cavazos has reaction from police and from the family. 18-year-old yeah! Zaki Rayford screaming for his father as Shirts police arrest him outside his family's home off Kiana Place Monday. The video was released to KSAT's defenders by Rayford's family. In one video, Rayford is seen getting out of the vehicle with his hands in the air before he runs to the door. A second video shows Rayford calling for his dad before police tackle him to the ground. In the video, police are heard telling Rayford that he was under arrest and to stop resisting. One police officer is seen using a taser. Another is then seen kicking the teen as he lays on the ground screaming. The door opens and police are heard telling Rayford's family that he was under arrest after he ran. Rayford's family confronts the police officer's use of force before one says, You better relax, you're gonna get it next. Uh, I promise you, you will. The video then ends. Police say they attempted to stop him after he drove through a red light. They say he then drove off into the Wilson Preserve neighborhood before turning into the driveway. Police say Rayford then attempted to flee on foot. Rayford was charged with felony evading in a motor vehicle, resisting arrest and detention and possession of marijuana. Rayford's family denies the police's account. Rayford's family released this statement to KSAT over the incident, saying, quote, it was unjust and uncalled for and threatening and misuse of force. It just makes us feel unsafe in the community we live in, end quote. Stephen Cavasso's KSAT 12 News. And according to police, Rayford has been arrested before, one for a rating arrest, engaged in organized criminal activity, and for delivery of a controlled substance. Shirts police say they have launched an internal investigation into the incident to ensure all their policies and procedures are followed. 541, 56 degrees. And our lawns are known for getting a little messy in the fall, but up next, why experts say you're better off mowing fallen leaves than wrecking them. 544 with cooler weather, leaves will start to cover our yard sooner than we know. Our Sarah Costa explains why you might want to consider your alternatives before breaking out that leaf blower. There's so much to love about fall, from the cooler weather to hot cider and pretty foliage. But across the country, millions of trees and plants prepare for winter by shedding. According to the Environmental Protection Agency, leaves and other yard debris account for 34.7 million tons of waste per year in the U.S. Experts say yard waste generates methane gas, which pollutes the air we breathe, as well as the soil and water. Burning the leaves is just as bad. It causes air pollution and can be dangerous for those around you. So instead, think about how the environment wants to work. Instead of raking fallen leaves, mow them over with a lawnmower to cut them down. This will help them break down faster during the winter and they won't take up a lot of space on your lawn. Experts say fallen leaves will help your grass if they are cut down rather than laying flat on top. And there's no need to stress about the leaves in your yard. You can use shredded leaves as mulch to use in your perennial garden beds before winter comes, and they will also help replenish your soil. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Well, the holiday season is typically one of the biggest travel times of the entire year. But with the pandemic, flying may look a little different this year. CNN's Mandy Gaither has more on what to expect. It's an industry still reeling from the pandemic. It has been devastating. But this holiday season, airlines are hoping more travelers take to the skies. 
U.S. airlines since the onset of this pandemic have absolutely prioritized the safety and health of all passengers and their crew members. They're leaning into science to make decisions. The industry group Airlines for America hoping to ease travelers' minds when it comes to safety. In addition to rigorous cleaning of aircraft, the organization says during check-in, passengers can expect to be asked simple health questions like, have you been exposed to COVID-19? And they recommend you get to the airport early. You may think not as many people are traveling. I can get to the airport at the last minute. And I would caution you the other way. Go ahead and allow extra time. And plan ahead, especially when it comes to food. Not all vendors are open at all of the airports. So you may want to grab a snack and an empty water bottle, and then you can fill up the water bottle on the other side of TSA. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Mandy Gaither. Now it's 547. Let's go ahead and check traffic with Officer Marcus Trujillo. And slight increases in traffic, really not too bad. So we're going to go from the map back over to Transguide. Uh, that's the, seems like every time we come to Transguide, the rotator stuck on the northwest side. 410 and Fredericksburg Road, still no problems here in the downtown area. 35 No Galito, starting to see slight increases on those southbound main lanes, but no problems there. 281 and Hildebrand as folks makes their way up around that bend there. Marcus. And it's that time. As you can see on Mark's face, <laughs> no shave November. Ah, yeah. <laughs> and Marcus and Mike. Faces around here. You can Let see it grow. It on Mark's face. I'm sorry? We can see it on your face? Yeah, you can. Yes. It's just, it's way grayer this year, guys. <laughs> no Shave November does continue, and we'll be updating you Join on the, the leaderboard tomorrow here on GMSA. See how the fundraising is going for this great cause all month long. But the whiskers are looking is good, it, gentlemen. Yeah. What's that? Is it gray or I can't? Mm -hmm. I did like right here and down here. Oh, barely. Yeah. You're good. Yeah. So, um, but you're, you guys, you, you look you look wonderful. Yes, distinguished. It's thank you. Yes, the gray hair is distinguished. <laughs> yes, and a reminder to donate. What? Exactly. Right. My mother used to always tell me as I was getting grayer. So anyway, <laughs> so yeah, for fantastic causes too. Uh, so please donate. Uh, beautiful sunset yesterday. Ah, oh, it's very nice. Great end to the day. And that's what we're going to be expecting again today. A nice uh, sunset and the sunrise. It depends on where you are. Now we do have a little bit of uh, kind of some fuzz showing up. And of course, yesterday, it just as the sun was coming up over the horizon, you didn't have that uh, kind of kind of star effect, if you will, from it because of some of that extra humidity right there along the horizon. That's what we're going to be uh, seeing again today. Still a lot of fog down there around Pleasanton, although it has come up somewhat now three quarters of a mile visit a hint of it there, Port SA and uh, Gonzales has actually improved a little bit and then it's dropped down Victoria LaGrange at four miles visibility. So we'll still be dealing with some of this. And of course, the uh, dew point temperatures, boy, look at that 61 right now at Bernie stage and some upper 50s in parts of the hill country. 60 in Canyon Lake. I point out those numbers because again, that's kind of that threshold and you start to not only just notice it, but you feel it a little bit and the humidity. Yes, it will drop down. Dew points will drop down a little bit this afternoon, but still enough out there with 80 degrees to kind of notice it. It's not that cool, crisp fall air this afternoon. We will see the humidity come up a little bit. Dew points come up somewhat tomorrow and then they'll hang around again you know, around the area. Uh, then we get into the weekend. We will start to see a bit of a drop on Saturday, but then humidity is going to come right back up on Sunday. We did have some uh, moisture aloft in the atmosphere that uh, kind of lighter shade of gray, but we'll get some of this drier air moving on in here. So once we get rid of any clouds this morning or any fog, we're going to have plenty of sunshine around there. Not anything really overly cold around the country. I mean, yeah, couple of readings close to freezing, but everything is definitely mild, uh, much milder. And that's because the main flow of the jet stream, the main kind of dividing line is still well up there right along the U.S. Canadian border, actually up into Canada. High pressure is kind of dominating things for us. We are watching this trough to develop out here to the west. What that's going to do is tend to help pull in all the, the moisture around here 
and help to warm things up. Now it's not going to be outrageously hot, but we'll still be about six, seven degrees above normal going into the uh, the weekend. And hopefully we get as this little bit of a front right there moves on through by Tuesday. Hopefully we get a couple of sprinkles squeezed out from that. Yes, it will knock temperatures down slightly, but still the really cold stuff is still staying way up there in Canada, even going into uh, the middle part of next week. Today, 75 degrees at noon, mostly sunny skies, high temperature today. Once again, right up to 80, a lot of sunshine, just noticeable humidity and humidity is going to be sticking around a little bit of that break Friday night into Saturday, but it comes right back in there and those low temperatures stay in the mid 60s. However, we do get uh, some of the temperatures and humidity trimmed Tuesday into Wednesday. Very good. At least it'll be, you know, nice for the most part, just a little warmer than we're used to. Right. Right, so I was just gonna say I'm a little close. Yeah, and I can see that gray. <laughs> you see it? Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah. Where do you get Marcus's flashlight out? I mean, you can see all of them. <laughs> and it's funny how the gray <laughs> just reflects the light. A little I know, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. Tell 551, 56 <laughs> degrees. And a trio of big screen veterans returning to theaters this weekend with a tense drama based on an award-winning novel. We're gonna have a preview next. Your lottery numbers: pick three, nine six nine, Fireball zero, daily four, three nine, three six, Fireball nine. Cash five, twelve, fourteen, eighteen, thirty three, thirty. And Lotto, Texas, 825, 26, 39, 52, 54. And your Powerball numbers, 23, 32, 33, 45, 49, Powerball 14, Power Play 2. Good luck. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the votes still slowly coming in this morning. Joe Biden just 17 electoral votes away from winning. President Trump launching a lawsuit blitz, trying to stop some of the vote counting. We're going to talk to polling expert Nate Silver of 538 on what went wrong in the run up to the election, because the polls were certainly off. Our team is live tracking everything that you need to know about the important battleground states as we all anxiously await the winner of this hard fought race that is coming up right here on GMA. We're trying to locate a Donnie wee boy. He married our son's widow. Got our grandson with him. You let it be known you're looking for a wee boy. I'll find you. Diane Lane and Kevin Costner play a couple searching for their grandson after their son's death in Let Him Go. I saw exactly what I've always felt about Donnie wee boy. And I saw that girl can't protect her child. Margaret Jimmy's her boy. He's your grandson. A charismatic woman who feels morally justified to go do something, and a man who loves her so much that he kind of has to follow just to protect her. You're with me on this, right? Right behind you. It's a fight for kindness, you know? It's a fight for good. They're trying to save their grandchild from a family that teaches bullying. Leslie Manville plays the matriarch of the boy's new family, which dominates their small town. It's no secret that I love to play characters that are different from me. And when I get asked to play, you know, a very bad mama from North Dakota, and I'm, you know, a very nice, quiet British actress, I, of course the answer is yes. You hit Morna. You hit your wife. Like. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Our KSAC community partner, University Health, is helping with a series of flu shot drives this month. Your first one coming up Saturday from 8 to noon at the Ferris Athletic Complex in the 8400 block of North Loop 1604 West. This is one of several flu shot drives. We have a link to register on KSAT.com. Glad you're with us on this Thursday morning. The holidays are almost here. That means many of us are gearing up to host some family and friends, but there's one very important element that could cause a turkey day disaster. Still ahead on GMSA, we'll check and see if your kitchen is ready for the holiday feast. And a good morning to you. It is Thursday. It is November 5th. And we will get to the weather and traffic in a few minutes. But first, we will get the latest look at the race for the President of the United States. Votes still being counted in critical swing states, with former Vice President Joe Biden holding the current lead. However, President Donald Trump is suing some states over the results. CNN's Karen Kafa is live with the latest. Good morning. And here's Karen with an update joining us now on this uh, still developing news. Oh, wow, 15 seconds to kill. All right, so overnight, as you're looking, some of the totals over Steph's shoulder. Again, it's still 264 to 214. 
Here's CNN's Karen Kaifa. Yesterday, much of our focus was on the states in the north and Wisconsin and Michigan. But now with those states decided, we look to the south, especially the southwest with Arizona and Nevada still counting their votes. Also, the races in Pennsylvania and Georgia still outstanding. Joe Biden has the lead in the electoral vote count right now. But President Trump's campaign signaled yesterday they are not giving up without a fight. A spotlight on the Southwest as both presidential campaigns view Arizona with its 11 electoral votes as a must win and the state continues its count. We want to make sure that every vote is counted and that's that's what we're focused on right now. Neighboring Nevada's six electoral votes are also still up for grabs with more results expected Thursday. By Wednesday afternoon, former Vice President Joe Biden had put two thirds of the Rust Belt blue wall that President Donald Trump breached in 2016 back in the Democrats column after winning Wisconsin and Michigan signaling confidence. I'm not here to declare that we've won, but I am here to report when the count is finished, we believe we will be the winners. The Trump campaign, meanwhile, announced legal challenges regarding absentee ballots and more access for campaign observers to ballot counting in Michigan, Georgia and Pennsylvania. We're going to win Pennsylvania, but they're trying to cheat us out of it. Pennsylvania's Democratic Attorney General called the motion more political than legal. There are observers observing this counting, uh, and the counting will continue. Trump hasn't spoken publicly since falsely claiming victory early Wednesday morning. He has since vented frustrations and made baseless allegations on Twitter, resulting in multiple posts labeled by the social media platform as disputed or misleading. Facebook is also applying labels to such posts. And the Biden campaign is signaling optimism because of where the votes remain to be counted in some of these states, in their cities and more suburban areas where they believe the turf is more favorable to them. As for the Trump campaign, they have Arizona and Georgia very much in focus today. They still believe they can claw back and hang on to win Arizona, but they are very concerned about Georgia, which they believe is must win for the president. Live in Washington this morning, I'm Karen Kaifa. Now back to you. Thank you, Karen. Well, we'll continue our election coverage throughout GMSA. But for now, let's go ahead and check on the mild weather with Mike Osterhage. How's it looking? Good morning, Mike. Good morning. Yeah, you summed up one word, much milder. I mean, we've been down in the 40s for almost the past two weeks, and now we're in the 50s and humidity, and you didn't wear a coat, did you? No, no. <laughs> I, I have it in the car, but I left it there. Yeah, and you might, I mean, in some areas, if it's kind of a dampish cool out there, but uh, yeah, you really don't need a jacket this morning at all. And notice how it's looking a little more fuzzy in this view. New Braunfels went from nothing, but now down to a half mile visibility. So all of a sudden the fog just kind of swooped on in there in the uh, San Antonio proper, not too bad. Pleasanton has a lot of fog as well. And this is going to be those situations that just change uh, literally minute by minute. Uh, quarter mile visibility in Gonzales and Victoria has a lot of fog, some in Carrizo Springs and LaGrange. So we have to keep watching this. It's going to continue to get thicker in places. Watch it around, say, uh, Randolph Stinson. It's usually a couple of spots that uh, tend to see the fog a little uh, sooner. Interesting, it is warmer in the hill country this morning, up into the low 60s than it is here in town. Big flip flop from where it was just a few days ago. And as far as the allergens, mold is on the low side. Temperatures aren't going to be going really anywhere this morning. We stay pretty steady because of all that humidity out there. Won't let things drop any further from where they are. And after we get done with all the uh, any low clouds and fog, we'll have more sunshine today. 75 degrees at noon and then top off once again today up to 80 so a few degrees above normal not bad as far as the humidity but you're gonna you're gonna kind of notice it and that'll be the situation going into the weekend maybe some showers keep your fingers crossed maybe some showers next week details coming up time saver traffic right now here's officer marcus trujillo and just looking at the map doesn't look bad so far no issues so things still look great out there mike we take a look at trans guide get a closer look 37 and south cross north and southbound lanes Starting to see a few more vehicles out there, but still have more than enough room. So no crowding just yet. No congestion, no slowdowns as we take a look at some other areas. Or maybe the rotator won't change. Well, we'll take a look at it next time. Marcus Stephanie. Thanks, Marcus. San Antonio police say he took his victim by surprise, and now they are out to take that man into custody. They said they already know the suspect's name. He's wanted in a cutting that happened overnight on Jackson Keller, not far from Loop 410. Our Katrina Weber there now with a live report. You mentioned earlier that police also have a good idea where they might find that suspect. 
Yeah, they told us that they had a couple of addresses that they were going to check out in their attempt to find that suspect. Now, he was last seen leaving these apartments across the street, the Jackson Apartments, in a white Honda. Police say that that suspect had been hanging out in a parking lot here. Then around 3.30 this morning, he went on the attack. They say he saw his ex-girlfriend with another man walking through the parking lot and then cut that man with a large knife or machete. The victim was taken to a hospital. Police say he had several cuts on his arms, but his injuries did not seem to be life-threatening. Police now focusing their efforts on tracking down the man who they say attacked him. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Katrina. Now to a Silva alert. The San Antonio Police Department searching for an 83-year-old man who they say has been missing since last night. Now here's a picture on your screen. Police say Lywood Lawrence is five foot three and weighs about 125 pounds with brown hair and blue eyes. He was last seen wearing a light blue long sleeve shirt, blue jeans and black boots. Lawrence was last seen around 10 last night in the 7,000 block of Meadow Green near Culebra and Loop 410. Police say Lawrence is diagnosed with a cognitive impairment and he was driving a 2016 Hyundai Elantra with Texas license plate NJG6290. If you have any information, you are asked to call the San Antonio Police Department. That number on your screen, 210-207-7660. Well, coming back to the race for president of the United States, the Associated Press says former president, uh, former vice president Joe Biden currently has 264 electoral votes. Meanwhile, the AP reporting that President Donald Trump has 214 electoral votes. However, counting is still taking place in Arizona, Pennsylvania, Nevada, North Carolina, and Georgia. Right now, election officials in Georgia say they will hold a press conference this morning at 1030 with the very latest information. And on your screen, you can see several post protests that are taking place around the country. You are seeing demonstrations in Phoenix, Denver, Portland, and Detroit. In many cities, there were both protesters in support of President Donald Trump calling to stop the votes and protesters against the president's response to the election. In the ongoing process of the presidential election, you may have seen a post circulating on social media claiming ballots filled out with Sharpies will be canceled. Post claims election officials in Arizona's Maricopa County, where Phoenix is located, handed out markers to voters intended to cast a ballot for President Trump. However, the Associated Press spoke with election officials in Arizona who say that's simply not true. The officials report that Sharpies will not invalidate a ballot and they are given out to prevent smudging while votes are counted. If you see any questionable claims online on social media, especially about the election, submit them to the KSAT Trust Index on our website. And taking a look at the balance of power for the U.S. Senate right now, the Associated Press reporting that there are 48 Republican senators and 46 Democrats. There are also two independent senators, Bernie Sanders of Vermont and Angus King of Maine. Yesterday, Democratic Senator Gary Peters of Michigan and Republican Senator Susan Collins of Maine were re-elected after each party tried to flip those seats. Now, there are currently four seats up for grabs, but current projections show the Senate will likely stay with a Republican majority. Over on the House side. The Republican Party looks like it gained some seats but is not on track to win a majority. Right now 204 Democratic representatives have been elected compared to 190 Republicans. The AP still has not called around 41 House races around the country. On election night, Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi said she projects the House will stay under Democratic control. However, members of her party are questioning her leadership because the party lost some seats. And here at home, a day after being elected as Bear County Commissioner for Precinct 3, Trish DeBerry says she is ready to hit the ground running for small businesses when she officially takes her seat. Having over 20 years of experience as a small business owner herself, DeBerry says she knows what it is like to experience an economic downturn. She says she understands the struggles small businesses are having amid the pandemic. And she says she wants to start a diverse task force made up of people in the industry who can bring more input put to the table. It is about accessibility to small business, having those conversations and coming up with solutions and ideas that maybe they haven't thought about it because like I said, they've been so busy hanging on by their fingernails to try to keep their doors open. 
And DeBerry says she would like to look at what other financial resources are available to small businesses as well. 610, 56 degrees. And Bruce Springsteen set a new record with his latest album. We're going to see why the album reaching number two on the Billboard charts is such a big deal. The San Antonio Botanical Garden offering new events to celebrate the fall. We'll see what they are and why it's considered pandemic friendly. And taking a look out with live cam, a mild 56 degrees. We're going to see a lot of 80s this weekend, but that's okay. We may see a slight cold front next week. We're going to check in with Mike after the break. Welcome back, 614. Starting today, you can enjoy fall at San Antonio Botanical Gardens with some special events. This morning, the garden is offering story time for children. It starts at 10, and the event will now happen every week. And this Saturday, the garden will host a fall edition of Viva Botanica. It's a way to celebrate Fiesta, even though many celebrations were put on hold due to the pandemic. The Botanical Garden says the 38 acres provide the perfect place to socially distance while having some fun. Just remember, if you participate, you will need to wear a mask and follow all local COVID-19 guidelines. Let's get an update on the Thursday morning commute with our traffic expert, Marcus. And as we take a look at the roadways, we can see that uh, 37 to 10 slight increase is really not too bad, but out there 1604 and Bandera Road area, we are seeing a little bit of that fog that Mike's been warning us about. Here in the downtown vicinity, things still look pretty good. We look out there 37 and South Cross, a little bit further out. Traffic starting to pick up in volume, very heavy there, 35 at 1604. All right, you know, that sky behind them there is beautiful. Yeah, I was going to say there are some clouds and then the, the clear skies above that. So once we get rid of any fog or low clouds this morning, I mean, we're going to have beautiful blue skies again later on today. A couple of uh, maybe some high wispy clouds out there. Temperatures uh, aren't going to be going really anywhere from where they are right now. We are in the mid to upper 50s, even some low 60s in the hill country, and there's so much humidity out there. You can't drop down below what dew point temperatures are. So that's why we're going to be uh, staying kind of stuck for the next couple of hours and we're closer to normal though. Normal low being uh, 55 degrees and that patchy fog and then plenty of sunshine later on today. 80 for a high temperature later on this afternoon. This oh, what a cool looking job. I love all those high wispy clouds and kind of going all sorts of different directions. Maybe a couple of jet contrails thrown on in there as well. Yeah, beautiful looking sunset. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. And notice how this shot, this is uh, from 410 I-10 looking off toward the east and how it is pretty uh, pretty fuzzy out there. First of all, low temperatures, of course, this is kind of the, the anomaly. When you look back the past 10 days, going back all the way to the 26th of October, we were well down into the 40s, um, averaging 10, 15 degrees below normal. Of course, on Halloween, we started off at 41 degrees. Same thing on the, the 27th, and that was back when uh, we only got up to 45 in the afternoon, and it was that record setting day. And then now it's back up to normal, so big change with these temperatures in the uh, in the 50s. Half mile visibility at New Braunfels, three quarters of a mile at uh, Pleasanton. Elsewhere in town, it's not bad, but again, these are the reporting areas, so in between, you may see some patches of fog here and there. Uh, for instance, that little low spot around uh, 281 Bassey Road, there tends to be some fog that likes to form up there. Uh, fog around Gonzales, LaGrange, Victoria, and then the dew point temperatures. Again, I mentioned how they are in the 50s and 60s. You can't drop down below what these numbers are, which is why temperatures are going to be staying pretty steady throughout the rest of the morning. We see a bit of a break. Friday into Saturday, just a slight little drop in the humidity, the dew points down in the low 50s, but then they come right back up. So it is going to be someone on the humid side going into the first part of the week. Hopefully, though, with that extra humidity hanging around here, there's going to be enough oomph to a next front moving on through here, which will be later in the day on Tuesday that it will squeeze out a couple of showers. Don't get really excited about any rain chances nor any big cold snaps. It'll just trim temperatures a little bit. We'll take anything we can get, but it's not going to be anything really to uh, write home about around the country. There's nothing going on. Notice how most all of the activity is way up there up into Canada, even north of the uh, US Canadian border. That's where the jet stream is right now, so it's holding or keeping all that really cold stuff way up there up in Canada. 75 degrees, mostly sunny skies today at noon and then a high temperature up to 80. Of course, we get the sunshine after the clouds and fog clear out this morning. Tomorrow we will be up to 80 again and then we just creep up a couple of more degrees, although 83 over the weekend 
going to be about six, seven degrees above normal. The big difference being the low temperatures will stay in the mid 60s. That means a lot of humidity around there. Front comes through on Tuesday. Hopefully it squeezes out a couple of showers. Temperatures a little more, little more fallish by Wednesday. Not necessarily jacket weather. And of course, Wednesday is Veterans Day. Veterans Day and still no big fronts on the immediate horizon no. for us. Not like that last one we had that was a really nice one. It, it was nice, but we can handle the 80s, right? You bet we can. Absolutely. Nice in, mild weather. In November? <laughs> for, yeah. for a short while. Okay. Because the <laughs> Look at it this way. We get this now. It's mm -hmm. going to be wet and windy and cold before we know it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, bring it on. <laughs> He's like, you should work in my department. You have a crystal ball that apparently works better than mine. 618, 56 degrees. And forget Black Friday. The customary day for sales looks like it will span the entire month of November. Find out more in today's GMA First Look. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. When Panera's Chef Klaus makes a pizza, he doesn't just make a pizza. He uses fresh, clean ingredients to make a masterpiece. Taste our delicious new flatbread pizzas today. Panera. Find your rhythm. Your happy place. Find your breaking point. Then break it. Every emergency gives you a potent blend of nutrients so you can emerge your best with emergency. Home is a place to share with the ones you love. And at Stanley Steamer, we love homes. However you choose to celebrate the season, we're here to make sure that your home is clean and safe for the holidays. Asthma symptoms can attack anywhere. Get fast relief here with Primatine Mist. FDA approved and available over the counter for mild asthma. It works quickly to restore free breathing. Primatine Mist. Breathe easy again. In this morning's GMA First Look, the legal fight just beginning in the battlegrounds. The drum campaign filing a stack of lawsuits amid a tense race for the White House with mail-in ballots taking center stage. In Michigan, the president's team filing suit to stop ballot counting. In Wisconsin, the Trump team demanding a recount, writing in a statement that there are, quote, serious doubts about the validity of the results. And in Georgia, the campaign is seeking to order Chatham County to store and account for all ballots received after the polls closed. The legal strategy seems to boil down to this, stopping the count in place Places where Donald Trump is ahead, Pennsylvania, continuing to count or counting again in places where he is behind. And coming up at 7 a.m., the latest on the legal battle in Pennsylvania. With your GMA First Look, I'm Mona Kosarabdi, ABC News, New York. Apple reportedly facing a shortage for key parts for some of its phones. Bloomberg reports the company is struggling to obtain power management chips for its newest iPhones and other devices. The shortage is said to be due to trade restrictions and supply chain disruptions due to the pandemic. It comes just ahead of Apple's busy holiday season. The fewer screens for teens, the better for them. A new study says teens have better mental health when they spend less time looking at screens and more time doing extracurricular activities. Canadian researchers found longer screen time was particularly harmful to girls, but they have not found a reason why at this time. Google says searches for liquor stores near me hit an all-time high on election night this week. Former Vice President Joe Biden's home state of Delaware had the most liquor store searches. Another popular search election night was Chinese food near me, likely because many people were searching for comfort food. The boss is showing the world that his glory days are far from over. <laughs> Bruce Springsteen made history with the release of his new album, Letter to You. That album debuted at number two on the Billboard 200 chart, according to Billboard. That means Springsteen has had a top five album every decade for six decades. He's the first artist to reach this level of success. Springsteen's, Springsteen's first charting album was Born to Run in 1975, and Letter to You is his 20th studio album. With a bit of luck and good timing, astronomers say they found the source of powerful radio bursts that appear in the universe. Scientists say, you know, in April, a weak rare burst came from inside the Milky Way galaxy, which is our own neighborhood. It was spotted by two telescopes in California and Canada. It was tracked to a star called 
a magnetar that's 32,000 light years from Earth, which has a huge magnetic field full of energy. And time now is 625 and 56 degrees for now. Still tracking the latest in the presidential race. We'll get another update on what states are currently, rather which states are currently undecided. And before you start cooking for your family and friends during the holiday season, you better check the kitchen. In our next half hour, we're going to take a look at how you should prepare for big meals. San Antonio police are looking for a man who they say may have used a machete in an attack overnight. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you why. San Antonio police are looking for a man who they say may have used a machete in an attack overnight. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you why they say he used it to cut another man. President Trump and Joe Biden still in a fierce battle for the White House. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington with the latest in the presidential race just ahead. Don't need a jacket this morning, but you might see some fog here or there. Mike Coast Trade is going to get you up to speed on what to expect on this early Thursday morning. And good morning. It is Thursday, November 5th. Fifth. Thanks for joining us today. Let's go straight to Mike, get an update on how things are looking. Uh, how warm do we get later on today, Mike? Uh, right over where we have been the past couple of days. Uh, what was interesting, though, is looking at that. And hey, Marcus, do me a favor, will you? Will you go stop this uh, show that we have that I have up and, and go up to the one above it? Um, I have the wrong one. This is the long weather, but a beautiful picture from yesterday. What I was going to say is that um, city that live cam shot from Brook City base looking up to the north. We couldn't hardly see anything. Usually right. the past couple of mornings we have been seeing some very, very uh, clear skies all the way up there. And is that the one No, keep going up and then start that show up there. So yeah. We'll get it. We'll get it figured out here in a second. So uh, there we well, we'll just look at uh, some radar right now and there is nothing showing up obviously on uh, radar as of right now. Temperatures. There we go. And as you can see, we've got a kind of a fuzzy look to the sky. This is 10 uh, 410 looking off to the east and temperatures right now. 56 degrees, dew points at 54. All of these numbers are way above where we have been the past couple of days. And again, we can't even see very well in that picture. So a lot of low clouds are hanging around here. Visibility at the reporting sites is still pretty good. However, uh, down there around Pleasanton, zero visibility, two miles. It's actually improved a little bit around New Braunfels. And then we've got a lot more off to the east. And the uh, Weather Service did issue a statement just saying kind of watch out for some of this fog, obviously, uh, off to the east of us. And it's going to be sticking around for the next couple of hours. And as far as the allergens, mold is on the low side. Temperatures today, you know, like I said, we're going to be right up there where we have been the past few days. Patchy fog, not too cool, although with some of that humidity, you might want just a light jacket just because it is sort of that dampish cool, but mostly sunny, kind of humid, 80 for a high temperature, and this weekend, nice, but not overly fallish. A little more humidity. A little front moving through next week, not a big deal, but at least it'll shave temperatures off. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now, and as always, our great man in blue comes to my aid. So thank you, sir. Space bar does wonders. <laughs> right. <laughs> right now, as we take a look at the roadway, we do have an accident, not on the access road of Highway 90, but down there military before Highway 90. So if you are going to the base down there, just keep in mind, may have a little bit of a delay. Other than that, things actually look pretty good out there. 37 at Carolina North and Southbound Lanes. No increases in the last 10, 15 minutes, but Fortune at Callahan definitely shows signs of more vehicles out there in the roadway. Right now, 35 at 604. So far, no issues there. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Marcus. Investigators are looking at jealousy as a possible reason for a cutting at a north side apartment complex overnight. They say the suspect lashed out at a man who was with his ex-girlfriend. Uh, Katrina Weber is live where it happened on Jackson Keller near Loop 410. Uh, Katrina, is there any update on the victim? Well, the last word we have from police is that he was stable. They say he was slashed on his arms with what they believe was either a large knife or machete. The police say that that attack came by surprise around 3.30 this morning. They say the suspect had been hanging out in the parking lot at the Jackson Apartments, and when he saw his ex-girlfriend with another man, he attacked. The victim was taken to a hospital for treatment of the slash wounds on his arms, but it did not appear that his injuries were life-threatening. Police say the suspect got into a white Honda and took off before they arrived, but they say they do know his name and they have a few addresses 
that they plan to check out to try to find him. So far, they have not made any arrests. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. This morning, still no winner in the presidential election. Millions of ballots are still being counted in those critical battleground states. Meanwhile, President Donald Trump is already starting legal challenges in some states. ABC's Faith Abube has the latest. This morning, the counting continues with former Vice President Joe Biden saying he sees victory ahead. I'm not here to declare that we've won, but I am here to report when the count is finished, we believe we will be the winners. Biden eating into Trump's lead in Pennsylvania, claiming he'll flip Arizona blue. Projections now show he's likely to win in Michigan and Wisconsin, and he's just 17 electoral votes shy of the presidency. His campaign setting a record for most votes for any presidential candidate. We've won with the majority of the American people. Indeed, Senator Harris and I are on track to win more votes than any ticket in the history of this country. Still, the former vice president urging patience as vote counting continues in swing states like Nevada, Georgia, and Pennsylvania. The president currently holds a lead in the Keystone State, but there are hundreds of thousands of ballots yet to be counted. The majority from Democratic-leaning areas, but without any legal basis, the president saying this. So we'll be going to the U.S. Supreme Court. We want all voting to stop. Even the Senate Majority Leader, Republican Mitch McConnell, weighing in. Claiming you win the election is different from finishing the counting. With the president's chances of staying in the White House for four more years narrowing, the Trump campaign now mounting court challenges in several states, including Michigan, where he's pushing for more GOP observers to be allowed into counting locations. This group causing chaos inside one of those sites, chanting, stop the count. Other than his overnight news conference yesterday, the president hasn't been seen. He's been behind closed doors in the White House. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. And if you would like to follow the 2020 election results at home, we have all the resources you need right now on KSET.com. You can track the vote totals in key battleground states, look at balance of power maps for the House of Representatives and Senate, and all of the local and state races here in Texas. Just head to our homepage and you will see our special vote 2020 webpage. Local health officials reporting 185 new cases of COVID-19 here in Bear County. They also report five new virus-related deaths. The seven-day average is now at 213 per day. City officials say that 255 patients are hospitalized with the virus, 110 of them in ICU, 56 on ventilators. Mayor Ron Nierberg will give us another update this evening in their daily press briefing. The United States recorded more than 100,000 new coronavirus cases in a single day yesterday for the first time since the pandemic began. Johns Hopkins University reports there were more than 102,000 cases. That also sets a worldwide record previously held by India for the most cases reported by a single country in a day. Until Wednesday, the highest count for a single day in the U.S. was October 30th, when 99,000 new cases were reported. Today, 9.5 million cases of coronavirus have been diagnosed in the U.S., more than 234,000 Americans have died from the virus. In other headlines, Philadelphia police have released body cam footage in the shooting of Walter Wallace Jr., warning the video is difficult to watch. It's a video from two officers involved in Wallace's death. You can see Wallace coming out of a home with what appears to be a knife. Officers can be heard telling him to drop the knife and back up several times. When Wallace walks in the street, he is shot several times. We have video stopped before that moment, but it goes on to show Wallace's mother run to her son's body and yell at the officers, you murdered him. The investigation is ongoing and no charges have been filed against the officers. And Ada has weakened to a tropical depression, but it brought heavy rains to Central America. The storm made landfall in Nicaragua on Tuesday as a Category 4 hurricane. And even though it has lowered in intensity, it can still cause significant damage through floods and landslides, according to the National, National Hurricane Center. The storm is expected to re-energize as it goes back out to the Caribbean. It is forecasted to make it to Cuba and then Florida in the next few days. 
In your morning consumer news, Starbucks closing an additional 100 stores in the U.S. within the next year because of shifting consumer habits due to COVID-19. With fewer people working in urban centers, the coffee giant is responding by setting up more stores in the suburbs. Starbucks also has become more focused on drive throughs and carry out with fewer customers lingering inside because of social distancing. The store closings are in addition to 400 previously announced for the U.S. and another 200 for Canada. T-Mobile has now agreed to pay $200 million to Seattle and FCC invest in an FCC investigation. Regulars had been looking into allegations that Sprint, which was bought by T-Mobile, failed to follow the rules in a federal subsidy program. Tesla CEO Elon Musk says that the most profitable automaker in the world nearly went bankrupt. Musk tweeted that Tesla was struggling to bring the Model 3 sedan to the market at the time. He says production and logistical problems brought Tesla within a month of filing for bankruptcy. Now the Model 3 has since become the company's best-selling vehicle. Tesla has also reported record profits and its shares have soared more than 400 percent this year. And time now, 639 and 56 degrees. With the upcoming holidays, preparing large meals can be stressful. We'll look at what you could do in your kitchen to make sure cooking those meals is safe. Six forty-two. As the holidays are quickly approaching, many of us are gearing to hop up, rather, to host host family and friends. Yes, it can be a stressful time of year. Yes. And in all of the planning and list making, don't overlook one very important element that could cause a turkey day disaster. A turkey day disaster? Yeah. Well, that doesn't happen for me because I buy it <laughs> already made. Already to go. <laughs> yeah. in this morning's Angie's list. David Sears shows you if your kitchen is ready for the holiday feast. When you're expecting dinner guests, oven problems can be a recipe for disaster, but they can easily be avoided. This morning, we've got some simple tips to make sure your kitchen is ready. First things first, clean. Don't overthink cleaning your oven and don't use the self-cleaning function right before the holidays because that's actually when your oven would be most likely to fail. Instead, wipe your oven out, take, clean up any crumbs that you can see and save the deep clean for after the holidays. Since the self-cleaning cycle of an oven raises the temperature extremely high, sometimes up to 1,000 degrees, it's not surprising that older or infrequently used ovens can be pushed to the edge. Be careful when cleaning the exterior oven, too. If your oven has knobs or switches, don't use a spray cleaner to clean them. Instead, remove the knobs, soak them in the sink, and then reinstall them. When you have the knobs removed, you might be tempted to squirt cleaner all around the area, but that can potentially cause it to short out. Instead, wipe the area with a moistened cloth. Also, make sure your oven is working correctly. If repairs required, get them fixed early. It may take time to get the parts you need, and getting repairs done early can also save you money. And if you're making the entire feast yourself, lack of oven space might be the biggest problem you face. But there are solutions for that as well. Consider bringing out your toaster oven, your hot plate, or even your crock pot to help make those sides for your holiday dinner. That way you're leaving your oven for your main entree. And these trusty sidekicks can be a great addition to getting your meal done on time. David Sears, KZ12 News. Yeah, a lot of folks now are doing uh, dual ovens in their houses I've for for those big family meals, so they can you know do the turkey on that one and throw the cookies or the sides or in the on the other. On the other, yeah, mm -hmm. that works very well. Yeah, pretty pretty convenient. Let's check traffic right now at 6:45. What's up, Marcus? And what time are the cookies ready, Mark? Cookies? <laughs> yeah, you said you're making cookies. What time are the cookies ready? I forgot Tacos Monday. You don't want to count on me for cookies. <laughs> <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> There's still That's time the to run to get tacos. So, Mike, we can count on Stephanie, but right. Oh. Anyway, oh, as we take a look at the roadways, <laughs> still no problems out there. Uh, we had that accident, but it's on military and it's closer to the gate, not near the access road there. So 37 of Carolina, no problems there. Let's take a look at some other areas like 35 of Rittman. Slight increase in the traffic up on the northwest side, 14 of Callahan and 35, 604. You see off in the distance, there's that fog Mike was warning about. Just remember both hands on the wheel, put away those distractions. Well, in the month of November, some of you might tune in and go, why is no one shaving? <laughs> it's a good reminder for you to donate to our No Shave November campaign. Of course, you can find all that information on kset.com. Yes, a link to donate to our team. Uh, proceeds go to No Shave November and a number of charities that they benefit. Including St. Jude. Children's Research, Research Hospital, Hospital. Up there in uh, Memphis. Great mm -hmm. organization. Yes, they are. They're fabulous. Mm -hmm. By the way, you were talking about tacos on Monday. Yes. Uh -oh. I mean, it's only 6:46. Oh. You can. <laughs> I know. 
<laughs> but this is one of the rare busy days it's, we actually have on this shift uh, as far as getting ready for like our 9 a.m. show. I mean, super busy day. That's true. Oh, okay. Yeah, for, for both of us. So, so I was gonna rain say, check. Stephanie, Stephanie can handle it. So, hey, uh, <laughs> yesterday... <laughs> <laughs> we, this is a great picture. It says, looks like it's raining clouds or this building is electrified. And I'm the building right below that banner right there. And just the way those high wispy clouds uh, went down toward it. Very cool looking picture. Thank you very much for that one. And yeah, we're not seeing any sort of a uh, sunrise, even though things have lightened up. A lot of low clouds hanging around here. Now, what's interesting is visibility out there at the airport is still being reported at 10 miles down here at the surface. Of course, that camera over there, 10 to 410 is up on top of a building out there. So it's a couple of hundred feet up uh, eight miles. New Braunfels, it was down to what half mile just uh, 15, 20 minutes ago and still have a lot of fog going down 37 in toward Pleasanton as well as off to the east. Gonzalez, Victoria, uh, LaGrange, and then we're also seeing some little bit in Hondo and Uvalde. So we're going to be on the lookout and watch out for some of this fog. And of course, there's fog. Maybe the streets are a little bit on the, the dampish side, and this is going to be the situation for at least uh, in the next uh, hour, hour and a half, a couple of hours, potentially. The humidity dew point temperatures are well up into the 50s and even some low 60s and we are going to be seeing, first of all, we've got uh, dew point temperatures that are up 16 degrees in Kerrville. This is just compared to 24 hours ago, 20 degrees in Fredericksburg. Of course, uh, over the past couple of days, dew point here has gone up about 20 to 25 degrees, just uh, nine degrees from this time yesterday. So humidity has been coming on in here as expected. It will continue to be on the relatively higher side. We get a slight break by Friday night into early Saturday, but then the humidity comes back in here for next week and hopefully though that gets squeezed out in the form of a little bit of rain. There is uh, what is now just a tropical low. It is Ada and of course it made landfall as a very strong hurricane a category four hurricane 30 mile per hour sustained winds. It's going to move back into the Caribbean and then regain tropical storm strength and continue a northeastwardly direction moving across Cuba and then heading in toward Florida and Miami specifically make another turn back off to the west basically and come out here in the Gulf of Mexico sort of linger around there but that front which is going to be coming down through here sometime on Tuesday is then going to sort of set up a bit of a, a barricade if you will and divert that thing back up to the northeast so it's not going to have any uh, impact on our weather forecast today got a lot of low clouds some fog this morning 75 degrees mostly sunny skies at noon and thank you for acting out that direction change Marcus <laughs> in the background there <laughs> That's what goes on behind the camera. 80 for high temperature today, mostly sunny skies. Because <laughs> at first I didn't know what he was doing. 59 tomorrow morning, so we're going to remain very mild. Low temperatures will stay in the mid 60s as we get into the latter part of the weekend. Highs in the uh, low 80s and a couple of showers Monday. Yes, sir. <laughs> Bandera 1604 area just saw on Transguide significant increase in the fog. Okay, Bandera 1604, so over there on the uh, far northwest side of town. Okay. Well, watch out for that. Thank you, guys. 649, 56 degrees. And coming up, bedtime can be a struggle for some people, but there are things you can do to make it easier to fall asleep. So join us tomorrow on GMSA where we go over proper bedtime routines. And outside with live cam. Let's see how things are looking out there right now. Yep. Definitely fog oh, wow. is a problem for some folks this morning. Be advised, we're going to get you one more recap before the top of the hour. Right now it is 10 till. We'll be right back. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the votes still slowly coming in this morning. Joe Biden just 17 electoral votes away from winning. President Trump launching a lawsuit blitz, trying to stop some of the vote counting. We're going to talk to polling expert Nate Silver of 538 on what went wrong in the run-up to the election, because the polls were certainly off. Our team is live tracking everything that you need to know about the important battleground states as we all anxiously await the winner of this hard-fought race. That is coming up right here on GMA. A slashing suspect's time on the run could be coming to a close. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. San Antonio police say they know that man's name and have some ideas where they might find him. He's wanted in an attack overnight here at the Jackson Apartments on Jackson Keller. The police got the call around 3.30 this morning. They found the victim in the parking lot of the apartment complex, which is on Jackson Keller near Loop 410. They say he was walking with a woman when her ex-boyfriend suddenly slashed him on his arms, 
either with a machete or large knife. Officers told us the suspect had been hanging out in the parking lot, then went on the attack when he saw the couple around 3.30 this morning. They say the victim was stable as he left for a hospital in an ambulance. The suspect left here before police arrived. They say he took off in a white Honda, but again, they do know his name and have some idea where they might find him. Reporting from the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thanks, Katrina. Our KSAT community partner, University Health, is helping with a series of flu shot drives this month. First one's coming up Saturday from 8 a.m. to noon at the Dub Ferris Athletic Complex, complex rather, 8400 block of North Loop 1604 West. And a reminder, this is one of several flu shot drives. We have a link to register on KSATcommunity.com. Right now it is 5 till. Let's get the very latest and our last look in this hour of traffic with Officer Marcus Trujillo. Well, Mark, right now, 410 Callahan still looking great out there. We actually have uh, fewer vehicles on the roadway than we did just about 20, 25 minutes ago. 410 at Crossroads, no issues there. And then as we move over to 410 at Fredericksburg Road, you can see slight increases closer to that I-10 or I-10 410 interchange. A little stalled vehicle off to the side there, 35 at Nogalitos, and then 604 Bandera. There's that fog that wasn't there about 30 minutes ago. Mike? Yeah, the other interesting thing is you just showed a picture there of 410 at Fredericksburg Road. Well, this camera is right up there, 410 I-10 area, so in the vicinity. But, of course, this camera's on top of that building, so it's up in some of those low clouds right now. We do have some fog, though, showing up around the area right now. New Braunfels has actually improved, and visibilities at the the uh, reporting spots are not bad. Pleasanton does have a lot of fog, some off to the east. Temperatures are in the 50s and 60s as of right now. High today with more sunshine up to 80. All right. Thank you, Marcus and Mike. We appreciate it. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you for joining us today. Have a happy Thursday. We'll see you back here for GMSA at 9. Good Morning America is next here on Casey.